Well, clap your hands, all ye people. Come on, clap like you're a young person in the house. Uh, and shout unto God uh, with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Now, part of the qualities of young people, as young people we shout, as young people we clap, as young people we move, as young people we shake our body. Do I have young people in the house? This is, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Shake your body, you are taking charge. Shake your body, you are dominated. Come on, we jump. We dominate. Glory to God. Amen. You will never find a losing side shouting. But every time you find the winning side, they are shouting. They are jumping. They are leaping. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Now, the good news is this. You will keep winning all the days of your life. Well, if there's a believer in the house, your amen will be loud and clear. Join me, lift up your hands, and let's together give thanks to God again this afternoon. Let's magnify His name for the privilege again to be gathered. This is the second day of our Youth Alive Forum. Lift up your voice and let's thank God from the depth of our hearts for everything in stock for us, uh, even in this segment. Lift up your voice and thank God. Our precious Father, we give you glory. We celebrate your name. Thank you for the encounter of today. Blessed be your holy name. And in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayer. Well, your amen is the loudest, your testimony is the biggest. Help me high five three people. Tell them something is changing around you. Ah, uh, you can do that. Something is changing around you. Why not declare to yourself something is changing in my life today? And one more time, give Jesus a big, big hand of praise. And please get seated. Amen. Come on, I said amen. Shiloh 2020. Well, declare that like a young person. Shiloh 2020. You are shouting the way it will answer for you. Shiloh 2020. Now, this is what you do. When I say Shiloh 2020, you say turn around encounters. Uh, because your encounters will be multiple. So let's take that Shiloh 2020. Shiloh 2020. That is how it will answer in your life. It's my joy this afternoon, and I appreciate God and the privilege given to me by my father, the presiding bishop, and our father, the prophet over this great commission to bring this word of exaltation. And I trust God that the unction that backs up this commission will work for every one of us here today. If there's a believer in the church, your amen will be loud and clear. Now it's important for us to understand that Shiloh is a prophetic platform. And it is ordained amongst others to deliver undeniable turnarounds. It is a prophetic platform. In Joshua chapter 18 and verse 1, the Bible says the whole congregation of the children of winners assembled together at Shiloh. God called and you came. God called for you and you came to Shiloh. Now, this is what is happening to you. It says the land is being subdued for you. Well, if I were you, my aim would be loud and clear. That means no matter where you are called to function, the land will be subdued before you. 
In 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 21, the Bible says, And the Lord appeared at Shiloh. So every time at Shiloh, God keeps appearing again and again and again. One of the core attributes of Shiloh is appearance of God. And principally, he appears by his word. God's word is landing for somebody on this mountain. I, I, I believe that person is in the house today. That word will turn your destiny around supernaturally. You believe that your amen is the loudest. So everything is ordained to turn. Say with me, turn. By a genuine encounter with the word. No man encounters God's word and remains the same. Every genuine encounter with the word culminates in a turnaround testimony. For you, your testimony must come. Come on, I'm believing I'm speaking to faithful people today. Your amen will be the loudest. At Shiloh, God met Samuel. And everything about him changed. At Shiloh, God met Hannah. And all her years of mockery came to an end. On this mountain of Shiloh 2020, God is meeting you. And your story is changing for the better. We began our teaching line yesterday. Making the most of your life. Making the most of your life. And very quickly this afternoon, we want to look at making the most of your life by the force of divine direction. By the force of divine direction. But someone may be asking this afternoon, what does it mean to make the most of my life? What does it mean? Number one, it means making your life count. It means making your life count. For someone here, your life will matter to your generation. Well, I'm speaking to just one person this afternoon. I say your life will matter to your generation. So when we talk about making the most of your life, we're simply saying making your life count count. Number two, it means fulfilling your destiny as ordained by God. May I say this to someone here, your destiny is an enviable one. I believe that person is in the house this afternoon. Your destiny is an enviable one. You will fulfill it. I say you will fulfill it. Number three, what does it mean to make the most of your life? It means to avoid the trap of a wasted life. To avoid and escape the trap of a wasted life. An unproductive life adventure. It's important for us to understand that life is an adventure. It is not a destination, it's an adventure. And it is ordained by God for continuous and unending progress. That's why the scripture says, For the path of the just is as a shining light, and it keeps shining brighter and brighter and brighter. Whose life will be shining brighter and brighter here? Come on, let me see you wave your hands if your life is shining brighter. Come on, can I see you wave those hands and shout aloud, Hallelujah! So life for you and me as designed by God is to keep getting better and better. Not better and worse. Life for you and I should keep advancing every day, making the most of your adventure. Now it's important for you to understand also that you and I are redeemed to reign as Kings and as priests. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6. The Bible says. And has raised us up. 
together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's where you are sitting now. I said that's where you are sitting now. And in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 21, he describes where you are seated. He says, where you are seated by redemption is far above principalities. Well, somebody will say amen to that. It is far above principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world. And he says, uh, far above principalities and powers. Re- Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10. You are seated far above them. Far above them. But to enjoy all of these packages by God, you and I need divine direction. Someone is asking, but what makes divine direction so crucial? Why do I need to be guided by God? Seven reasons. Number one, it takes the one who knows the way to show the way. It takes the one who knows the way to show the way. In Revelation chapter 1 and verse 8, hear what God described himself as. He said, I am Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning. And the ending. I am that which is. And that which was. And that which is to come. So concerning your past, your present and your future. I am in charge. God is saying that glorious future. I will take you by the hand into that future. While well, someone is selling that word with a loud amen. You are safe. When you are in the company of the one that knows the way. Your mind is at rest. When the one leading you knows the way to the destination. There's what we call the GPS. In many nations, when you are about moving from one point to the other, there's no apprehension when you have the GPS. All you do is to key your destination. And from the place where you are, the GPS begins to lead you. It tells you move the next one mile or the first one kilometer, then take a turn to the right. And you are driving with confidence as if you know where you are going. Your confidence is in the GPS. When you get to that one mile, it says take a left turn. And you take that turn without any shadow of doubt. Why? The one leading you is the one who knows the way. Am I saying something here tonight? That is how the Holy Ghost is. He is the GPS to the believer. He is the beginning and the ending. He knows your tomorrow better than you know your tomorrow. So he is taking you by the hand. And he's leading you to your place of glory. He's leading you to your place of enthronement. Am I speaking to somebody here today? God will take you by the hand. And you will arrive where he has ordained for you. Number two reason why we need divine direction. It guarantees continuous progress in life. Exodus chapter 23 and verse 20. It said, Behold, I send an angel before thee. That's God speaking. He said, I'm sending an angel before thee to keep thee in the way. To keep thee in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Well, I've got good news for somebody today. There's a place of honor God has prepared for you. You didn't hear me well. There's a place of glory that God has prepared for you. You will get there. Your amen is the loudest. So when God is guiding you, you are sure of continuous progress. Number three, why do I need divine direction? It terminates assumptions in life. Too many people live life on assumptions. 
They can't tell with clarity. They can't tell with precision the next step to take. That is why many are frustrated today. Because at the root of frustration is assumption. For adventure, I should study biochemistry. Why? I can't tell. I, something is just telling me to study biochem. Assumptions. That is why many suffer frustration. But for you on this mountain, you have escaped. I say you have escaped. Number four, why do I need divine direction? It delivers from erroneous living. Divine direction will deliver any man or woman from a life of errors. In Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 25, the Bible says there's a way that seems right. It looks good before the natural eyes. But the Bible says there are ways of death and destruction. And the same Proverbs 14 and verse 12 repeats the same scripture. There's a part that seems good. I had God's servant many years ago say to us, Not every door is God's door. Not every open door is God's door. So be careful. Ensure you are guided by the Holy Ghost in the steps you take. For there's a way that seems right. It looks good. It looks enviable. But there are ways of destruction. In fact, it's not every job you jump at. Some years ago, there was this woman in one of the missions we were privileged to serve. She had a fantastic job. Was being paid about $30 an hour. Fantastic. She was doing well. And all of a sudden, another opportunity seemed to have opened. And that was about $35. Ah, she said, this is God moving. 35 from 30. And she came and said, I'm jumping. I said, hey, watch it. Find out, is this open door God's door? Or is it a trap in disguise? But she felt the offer was too juicy. I'm jumping from 30 to 35. No need for prayers. And she jumped and left where she had served for many years. And jumped into this new one that looked good. A few months down the line, they were downscaling. And she was among those hacked out. So all the years of investment in the other place went down the drain. For you, you will not take any step in error. Well, I'm praying for somebody here today. You will not take any step in error. Next, it guarantees divine presence. When you are directed by God, divine presence is secured. For the Lord is my shepherd. Psalm 23 from verse 1. I shall not want... He makes me lie down in green pastures. My life is flourishing. Everything is working. He leadeth me beside the still waters. No apprehensions, no tensions. Verse 3. He says, He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Now, watch this. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Come on now. He said, I'll fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. You go ahead to prepare a table before me. In the presence of my enemy. You go ahead to anoint my head with oil. And my cup begins to run over. How many people's cups here will begin to run over? Let me see you wave those hands up. And shout the loudest. Amen. This God will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. So when God is guiding, His presence is secured. He goes with you. In Mark 16 and verse 20, they went everywhere preaching. And the Bible says, and God walking with them. He keeps walking with them and confirming the word. With signs following. 
So every time God is leading, you never lack signs. When God is the one guiding your steps, everyone around you begins to wonder at your result. Well, I've got good news for one person here. Upon your return from Mountain Shiloh 2020, everyone around you will begin to wonder at you. For someone that has been mocked before you came to this mountain, as you are returning back to your location, everyone that mocked you will begin to celebrate you. Divine guidance secures divine presence. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Romans 8.31, when God is on your side, the adventure of life is sweatless. What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Your destiny is secured. Well, that's a prayer for one person here. Your destiny is secure. Number six, why do I need divine direction? It is the gateway to a great future. Divine direction is the gateway, the pathway to a great future. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. This is God's word for somebody here. He said, for I know the thoughts. I know. God is saying to you, my son, my daughter, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. He said, just in case you don't know, let me tell you the thoughts. They are thoughts of peace. Somebody say amen to that. They are thoughts of peace. That means the peace of God is arresting every unsettlement in your life. And against all the counsel of the wicked, he said, they are not thoughts of evil. He said, I am leading you to your expected end. Yeah, that should be someone's point of excitement right now. How many of you have a glorious tomorrow? Let me see you wave your hands. You are sure your tomorrow is colorful. Your tomorrow is bright. Your tomorrow is enviable. Wave those hands. Let your neighbor see you wave those hands. Come on, shout the loudest. Amen. You will get there. So essentially, the leading of God is what makes the going great in life. When God takes you by the hand, you are sure the adventure of life will be hitch free. In Isaiah 48, verse 17 and verse 21, Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. He says, I am the Lord thy God. I teach you the way to profit. So when God is the one leading you, you only make profitings in life. I teach you the way to profit. He says, I am the Lord. I lead you in the way you should go. And watch verse 21. Every time God is leading you, you never test. He said, and they tested not when he led them. Through the desert. He caused even waters to flow out of the rock for them. He cleaved the rocks also. And waters began to gush out. May I pray over someone here by the word of the Lord. That's how blessings will be gushing out after you return. By the time you turn to your left, blessings will be gushing out. You look to your right, blessings from God will be gushing out. If you are the one I'm praying for right now, your amen will be the loudest. Number seven. Why do I need divine direction? It guarantees supernatural breakthroughs. Supernatural breakthroughs. There was a man called Jonah. This man was sent on a mission by God. And God said to Jonah, if you read from Jonah chapter 1, from verse 1 through to verse 12, God said to him, you have to go on an assignment. 
to a land called Nineveh. I'm sending you there to execute my will. And Jonah said, no, I don't like the word Nineveh. I prefer the one called Tashish. Because it is Tush. Tashish sounds more sophisticated. Nineveh is too local, so I'm going to where I want. And Jonah took a boat and was heading to a destination not ordained by God. And by divine arrangement, he landed in a fantastic place. The Bible describes that place like it said the stomach of a fish. May God not push you in that place. May disobedience not get any man to the stomach of a fish. And God caused us the fish to swallow him and took him to the place the same place he refused to go and go to Nineveh and vomited him there what is the word for the Lord? by force you will fulfill destiny no matter what is distracting you by the word of the Lord you will fulfill your destiny so God organized the fish to selectively swallow him and organize the movement of the fish to land in Nineveh and throw him out there. And I suppose, imagine Jonah look around and saw the signboard Nineveh and say, Oh God, I'm here. I didn't want to come here, but see where the fish brought me to. Did you ever wonder why Jonah did not uh, digest inside the belly of the fish? Did you ever wonder why he survived there? Because he was a man on a mission. There's somebody here, you are a man and a woman on a mission. I'm speaking to one person here, you are a man and a woman on a mission. And no matter the forces against your destiny, you arrive there. And he got there with a mandate, simple instruction to the land of Nineveh. In 40 days, Nineveh is doomed. And that was all he was screaming everywhere. That was all the message. But because he was led by God, there was a breakthrough. The Bible records that the whole land of Nineveh, from the king to the last human being, from the biggest animal to the smallest animal, everyone went on a revival fast. That was the only time it was recorded in scriptures that both humans and animals fasted. A revival broke in the land. There was supernatural breakthrough. And everything changed for Jonah. May I declare by the word of the Lord. For somebody here. Supernatural breakthrough becomes your identity. Well if that person is in the house this hour. Your amen is the loudest. You are shouting the loudest amen. Your testimony is the biggest. So you don't struggle. When God is leading. It is destiny risk. To attempt to lead yourself. God's servant our father. Describes life. As a wide life pack. Filled with wild beasts. So it takes the leading of God. To take you by the hand. To where he has ordained for you. In Isaiah chapter 45. From verse 1 to verse 3. The Bible says, Thus say the Lord to his anointed. And that's somebody seated here. Well, if that person is here, your amen will show it. Thus say the Lord to his anointed, to you. To you. To someone on hope entrance. To another person on the faith entrance. To someone by the grace entrance. To someone by the love access. Uh, to another person by the glory entrance. To someone by honor entrance. God is saying, I'm taking you by the hand. Uh, I'm leading you to the place I've ordained for you. You are getting there. Whose right hand I have holden. He said to subdue nations. So when God is holding your hand, you don't subdue villages. You subdue nations. He said, I will lose the loins of kings. So even men and women in high degrees, they become intimidated at your appearance. 
I will lose the loins of kings. Watch this. To open before you the two leaf gates. There's someone here. God is opening those gates first fully. By the word of the Lord, no gate will remain shut for you. Someone just picked a miracle job right now. Put that scripture. And watch this. He said, when I open the gate, the gate shall not be shut. It shall not be shut. It shall not be shut. That gate of favor will never be shut. That gate of promotion will never be shut. That gate of turnaround encounter shall never be shut. If that word is for you, your amen will be the loudest. Now, this is it. There's no effort under heaven that will ever match divine guidance. No effort under heaven will ever match with the leadings of God. For as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the ones called the sons of God. Now, as we begin to wrap up tonight, how do I assess divine guidance? If divine guidance is this crucial, how do I gain access? Number one, by the help of the Holy Spirit. You need divine guidance. You can't be far from the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 16, and from verse 13 to 15, John 16, from verse 13 to 15, the Bible says, How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, capital S, the spirit of truth, that's the Holy Spirit there. When he is come, the Bible says, he will guide you into all truths. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. In the morning segment, our visitation, Bishop Aremu began to dissect the, the ministry of the Holy Ghost in showing you, in uncovering the deep things of God. And he gave his testimony of how the Holy Ghost used to show him exams before they come. And when he gets to the exam hall, he will say, I remember I've seen this somewhere. And he will just reproduce what he saw somewhere in the real thing. For any student here, upon your return, the Holy Ghost will be your partner. Well, you didn't hear me well. God will be moving you from the back of your class to the foremost front of your class. Everyone that has mocked you to say, what will you graduate with? They will see you graduate with first class. The help of the Holy Spirit. Number two. How do I assess divine guidance? By the word of God. By the word of God. Psalm 119 and verse 105. The Bible says, Thy word is a lamp. It's a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. So every time the word is leading... Every time God is guided by his word, it becomes a light in the midst of darkness. It says, my word is a lamp. Lamp is ordained to brighten the space. It said, it is a light to your path. So you don't stumble on your journey. Number three, quickly. How do I assess divine guidance? By prayer and fasting. By prayer and fasting. Jeremiah 33 from verse 1 to 3. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the second time. For someone, this is the second day of the Utah Life Forum. God's word is coming for you in particular. 
that word that is opening the next chapter of your life is hitting you now. And the word came to Jeremiah the second time. He said, while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, verse 2, Thus saith the Lord, thy maker thereof, the Lord that formed it, to establish it, the Lord is his name. Verse 3, he said, call unto me. When you call, I guarantee I will answer. And watch this, when I answer, I will show you. Somebody lift up your right hand, say, to me, say with me, Lord, show me. Come on, say loud and clear, my God, show me. This God will show you your next place of honor. He will uncover to you your next place of dignity. Call unto me, and I will show thee. And watch what he will show you. Not ordinary things. He says great things. He said mighty things. Things you never knew before. So God will drop in ideas for business creativity. Inside the heart of somebody here. Upon your return, that business will be starting up. By the time you are coming back to Shiloh 2021, you are coming to your multiplied states. If that word is for you, your amen will be louder than your neighbor's. Now, as I close, two quick benefits of divine guidance. What are the blessings that come your way when God is guiding you? You enjoy divine protection. He said, I will send my angels before thee. I will give them charge over you. Exodus 23 verse 20. I will send my angel before you. He will lead you in the way. He said, they will bear you upon their wings. Lest you dash your feet against the stone. For someone, all through this new year coming, you will never encounter any evil occurrence. On your left, the angel of God will be by your side. On your right, the angel of God will be by your side. In front or behind you, the angels of God will keep charge. Number two, blessing that you enjoy by divine guidance is divine provision. So when the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want. Psalm 23 verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. And as a shepherd, he's leading me. You see, and when the Lord is my shepherd, one thing I'm not permitted to suffer is lack and want. For someone here, your last time of being broke is the last time forever. If you are that person, jump on your feet and shout the loudest, Amen. If you are that person, jump and shout the loudest, Amen. Well, the good news is this. Your best days are just beginning from now. God is raising an army of end time giants. Young people that will begin to rule. Young people that will begin to take charge. And I'm speaking to many of them here today. I'm speaking to men and women that will dominate their field. Now hear this. We have had the testimonies of others. By the time we are returning Shiloh 2021. Shiloh 2021. I'm speaking to one person here. Shiloh 2021. It's your testimony we will hear. It's your testimony we will hear. For you here, it's your testimony we will hear. For someone around this axis, it's your testimony we will hear. Say with me, my destiny is secured with God. Tell your neighbor, no shaking. Tell somebody else, no shaking. Tell that person, my destiny is secured with God. Therefore, no shaking. Come on, shake your body. Tell that person, no shaking. Well, I have got good news for somebody here. Your best days begin from now. 
You have seen God work for you before, but God will begin to work greater works. Lift up your hands where you are and give quality thanks to God. Appreciate Him. Magnify Him. Celebrate Him. Acknowledge Him. Thank you, precious Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' matchless name we have prayed. Now, quickly before we close. You don't have a heritage in a family you don't belong to. When it's time for the distribution of inheritance, that is when you know the difference between family members and strangers. You may be a friend, but when it's time for distribution, they say, excuse us. It's time for family meeting. So they begin to distribute the blessing to members of the family. Well, the good news is this. God has vowed that after Shiloh 2020, everything that will be happening for you will be turned around encounters. That means before you finish thanking God for the first, another one has come. While you are jumping and thanking God for the second, the third one will land. But for you to qualify, you must be an authority authentic, bona fide member of the family. All has bowed. This afternoon, there's one person here. You know in your heart that things are not the way they used to be with your God. Of adventure, you have never given your life to Him. You've just been attending church. Oh, you the life forum. We are young people with a glorious tomorrow. Great. But God is saying, I only take the hand of my own and lead them to the glorious future. Up adventure, you were once born again, but along the line, things just shifted. But the good news is this, God is not condemning you. He's saying, my arms are wide open, come back home. May I pray for somebody here tonight, you, this afternoon, you want to give your life to Jesus? Up adventure, you want to rededicate your life to him. Wherever you are, just lift up your right hand where you are. Just lift up your right hand. You have nothing to be ashamed of all across this building. You are saying yes to Jesus. Just lift up your right hand. Lift up your right hand. Lift up your right hand. Now say this word of prayer with me. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. From this moment, I am saved. 